Hey guys, welcome to CheatCheatPros.com. Today is Tuesday, August 6th, and I'm back on vacation this week, so I've been posting a lot of plays, and I just can't believe this. We've been on absolute fire. What's ironic is I had four people cancel, and we're like 13 and four in the last three days, so I'm like scratching my head. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or whatnot, but look at this. So yesterday we posted these three plays and we swept them, won all three of them. And we even had Boston plus 125, they won. We had the over, they won. We had the Mets, they rolled. Then we had Oakland run line over the White Sox, that covered, and it was even plus 120. So we swept that. And then the day before we posted six plays, went five and one. And then the one game we missed, oh, Tanner Gordon threw a really good game. So they deserve that, but hit five out of six there. And then the day before that, I think this was Friday, we went three and one. So we've been on absolute fire. I think we were 65% for the month of June, 64% for the month of July. And then so far in August, we're 13 and four. So doing really good. But anyways, I wanted to take a look at a couple plays today and show them to you on the cheat sheet, kind of show you what I like and some of the things that I look for. There's really only three aspects to a game. There's your starting pitchers, there's your bullpen, and then there's just the team. How well are the bats doing? Are they hitting the ball? Are they not hitting the ball? And so that's why we have our custom power rankings. So the first thing I do every morning once I get the sheet done is I come over here to the betting board and I just go up and down here and I'm looking at a couple of things. I'm looking at the power ranking in the bullpen over here, how they've done their last 10. Let me make sure you can see that. That might be a little better. Oh, I clicked off of it. Okay, so I'm looking at power ranking bullpen, how they did their last 10, and then I just want to kind of see what the Vegas number is. That way it kind of tells me roughly what the line is. And then we have our model here, which take it with a grain of salt, but it is a way to kind of point you in the right direction. And then I'm going to look at the pitchers, how they're doing up against each other. And then I got the props in here. Um, I occasionally throw in some props, do some price picks, so I like having that. But this hits, excuse me, hits for innings pitched has been a really good stat thus far, and that's one of the secrets to our success recently. I've been focusing down on this, and that's where I've been getting my no-run first inning plays and my overs and whatnot. And then also here, as always, you can quick, uh, quickly look through the last three games and see how they're doing. Um, once I go through and I earmark the games, um, I'm going to go over here to the main tab, and we're going to dive into the individual game itself. So let me give you an example of one of the games I posted today. So um, for example, let's say, uh, let me give you one that I didn't post on Twitter that I only post in the premium group. So the one that I posted in the free group for everybody was Kansas City, Boston over. Um, and yeah, we'll go over that one and I'll kind of explain my thought process on that. But another one that I like, I typically don't ride the Giants unless there's a big advantage, but the Giants, they were another play. So when I look at this, I see 4.6, 4.4. That tells me they are a slight favorite. So it's minus 110, minus 120, somewhere in that ballpark. If you go run line, you're going to get plus money. What I like is we have an edge here in the power ranking, four versus 24. And also we have a stronger bullpen, five versus 29. And last 10 games, we have eight wins versus only four wins. So that is really good. So that's a game I earmarked that I want to look into. And then Birdsong and Gore. So when I first ran the sheet, Birdsong, he... He's got a handful of starts. He wasn't in our database, so I wanted to pull him in, but we had Gore, and what should jump out at you is this 1.31. So typically, hits per innings pitched, if they're giving up a hit an inning, that's not good, but one is okay. So one hit per innings, kind of league average, kind of right in the middle, you know, not good, not bad. If they get down to like 0.8 or lower, that's really good. If they get over 1.1, that's really bad. So here we have Mackenzie Gore, 1.3. And ironically, Hayden Birdsong, who I had no idea who this was, 0.6. So those are two things that jumped out at me. So doing a quick glance at their last couple of games over here, I see Gore, five innings, eight hits, five innings, nine hits. So that tells me he's getting slapped around. And St. Louis isn't doing that well. And they put six runs on him. And then we got Hayden Birdsong, who went five innings, three hits, no runs. That's fantastic, but it was against Colorado, so grain of salt. His other one was also against Colorado, six innings, two hits, two runs. And then you can't see this, but the prior one was five hits, or five innings, two hits. So that's really good. So that's a game that we want to earmark and look at. 
So then when we come over here, let me shrink this down so I can see the screen. Um, oh, it's right there. So as always, click inside this little home box. We're going to come down here. We're going to fly around and you can pick your home team and you got it. So looking at this, we can see over the last 10 games, San Francisco has been doing really well. I like to look and see how many times they're covering the run line. San Francisco doesn't score a ton of runs. They don't run away from games. They're typically in dogfights, strong bullpen. So run line's always a little bit scary. And then over here, looking at Washington, they beat Milwaukee a couple of times. That's fantastic. But then the other wins, they just got beat up on. 8-3, 5-4, 17-0, 9-8, 4-3. So they played a couple close games. But I'm looking at the power rankings. So we got number six versus number 22. Now, if you're just looking at the power ranking and you don't want to dig into anything else, that's fine. But I like looking at these four numbers. And if you see my write-ups, you'll see me put these in there. So 6th, 6th, 9th, 4th, and WRC+, plus home runs, RBIs, and ISO power. So that's really good. So that tells me San Francisco's been playing well. And then you come over here to Washington, and you see 30th in home runs. So over the last two weeks, they've only got six home runs as a team, and they have the third worst ISO in the league, um, but a pretty low strikeout rate, so not doing the best. And then also you can see home road splits, lefty-righty splits, but I'm not going to dive into that. I also want to look at the starting lineup, kind of see how they're doing. Tyler Fitzgerald has been on fire, and then we got Chapman here. He's lighting up a lot of categories. So we got a couple guys up top, lower end of the lineup, 8-9, uh, not real good. Then we come down here, and I'm not going to bash Washington. I mean, C.J. Abrams, he's been struggling. He's hitting 132, but this Yepes guy, he's been pretty solid. Uh, Louis Garcia, and then James Wood. Uh, those guys have been doing really well for a team that's really not projected to do anything. Um, they put together a few wins and won some games, so that's good. And then I'm going to dive down here and take a look at the pitchers. So we have McKenzie Gore. And you want to see a season stats, just take a quick look real quick. We have 111 innings. I make sure we've got 50 or 60 before I start quoting any stats or anything. And then uh, he's got a 4.54 ERA, a 1.5 whip, and allowing a 276 batting average. So the other thing I check is home road splits. I just want to see, are they close? Is one drastically different? Here you see he's slightly worse at home, and again, you want to check the innings and kind of see where they're at, but at home, he's got a 4-4 versus 4-7 ERA, so that really doesn't mean much to me, but then his whip jumps from 1-3-6, which is already pretty high, to 1-6-1, and then his average, 259 to 294, so that just tells me he struggles a little bit at home, and then right here, I, was, I used to just have the bullpen 29th rank. But I want to see these other stats. I want to see how they rank ERA, WHIP, XFIP, home runs, and walks per nine. And you can see those little rankings over here. So basically, all the research that I used to do on games, I would go to several different sites. I've just put it all into one sheet where you can open it up, look at it, everything's there, make your decision. And then you can come down here and we have his game logs. So game logs are always fun to look at. And what jumped out at me is these last two games... 5.1 and 5 innings, so 10.1 is last two. Look at this, 8 hits, 9 hits, 3 runs, 6 runs. So 17 hits and 9 earned runs in his last 10 innings. That is awful. So that's someone we want to go after. Now, he is at home, so we can look at his home starts here. So his last home start, he only gave up 2 hits, 3 runs, but it was on in 2 innings, and he got pulled. He had 4 walks. They're down here, so that's alarming. And then these other two games, he had five walks here. Oh, my word. I didn't notice that earlier. Uh, but six hits, five runs, five hits, one run, and 3.1. So Gore can get slapped around a little bit. So I think there's an edge here for San Francisco. The line wasn't nearly as high as what I expected it to be. And then we come over here to Hayden Birdsong, and I had no idea who this was. One, bullpen rock solid. All the ranks over here, top six and most, top ten in home runs per nine. So it's solid. So if he gets in trouble, they pull him out. I'm confident the bullpen can hang on. It's not like the White Sox bullpen that's giving up eight or nine runs a game. You know, that's fine. Um, he doesn't have a lot of innings. He only has 30, but still an ERA less than three, average whip, and allowing a 202 average. That's really good. So now I want to look at his game logs. So we come down here and we see he's got six starts. And I'm going to look at the innings. I want to see how long is he going. So he's throwing five innings pretty consistently. We got five, six, five, 5.2, five, 5.2. 5 so five innings. Sometimes I try to stretch him to six. That's pretty good. 
And then his hits is just absolutely amazing. Three, two, two, five, four, six. So look over here at McKenzie Gore, eight and nine in the last two, and he's coming off three, two, two, five, four, six. That's phenomenal. And then he's even limiting his run, zero, two, one, two, two, three. So not too bad. He's a pretty decent pitcher. So that's what put me on the San Francisco play. Um, the hits per inning pitched is new today, or this is new right here. Um, I threw it in real small here at the bottom so you kind of see each start, but 0 0.6, 0 0.33, 0 0.4, 0 0.96, 0 0.8, really good. And then you come over here and you look at McKenzie, 1.57, 1.8, 1.0, 0.58, 194. So he's got a few starts in there that are kind of alarming. The one thing that did jump out with me with Birdsong is he's got two to three walks in every start. So that does worry me a little bit, but the line's low enough. I don't mind it. We have a strong bullpen. Hey, why not? Let's flip over, take a look at this over in the Boston game. So I live in Kansas City. If you haven't followed me before, big Chiefs fan, Royals fan. I was going to go to the game last night, but it was just brutally hot. Tonight we got a break. It's probably, oh, what is it? low 80s outside. It's absolutely awesome. So this will be the perfect weather game. Um, the line's close enough. I didn't want to take a side. I don't like betting on my Royals, but I do like this over. Um, it originally opened at eight and a half. And um, when I posted it this morning, I said, you know, if you can afford it, buy the alt at eight. I love eight because the only way you lose that is if it's seven runs or less. So that's what I put in the big round robin parlay that I posted. So some of the things I like power rankings, look at Boston. I mean, First, first, third, third, second. And then KC, they're doing real well. Not so good in ISO power, but everything else pretty decent. Um, they've both been putting up, you know, quite a bit of runs. And what I love even more is look at Boston's bullpen. ERA of 609, XFIP of 547, and a whip of 165. And they're walking four hitters per nine. So Boston's killing the ball, and their bullpen sucks. So that's that's all you need for an over. Kansas City's been up and down. They've been dead last in bullpen. They've got into the top 15. And right now, I just kind of checked their ERA, 5.13. They have a couple new guys in there that are decent, but not great. Um, they still have some issues, so they're not an elite bullpen by any means. And then look down here at the lineups, man. These guys are just absolutely on fire. Look, It looks like a Christmas tree. Everything's lit up here with all these RBIs and home runs. And look at the average. Over the last two weeks, 345, 350, 300, 460, 304, 364. If you're playing DFS, that's a lineup you want to stack. That's really good. And then you come down here, pretty similar for Kansas City, but they've got a few holes down here with their 7, 9, and Massey struggling a little bit. But still, they should be able to put some runs on the board. Taking a look at the pitchers, Lugo has been really good. 257 ERA, 215 average, so that does scare you a little bit, but... Look right here. He just faced Boston four starts ago. Now, it was on the road, but he only lasted five innings. He gave up 10 hits and five runs, so they nailed him. And what did I say last night when Boston came to town? The same exact thing. They absolutely annihilated. I can't remember who threw last night, but we saw the same thing. I pointed it out in my write-up. I said they annihilated him, and they... Did it again last night, and I think that what they put up nine runs. What was that? Nine to five. Um, and so same thing here. Lugo's been great, but Boston's the only one that's really got to him. Looks like Chicago got to him once. Other than that, he's had five good, great starts actually. But Boston could be his nemesis, and they've already got him once. And then look at the BVP here. Well, seven of twenty-four. That's not great, but two ninety-two. Everybody's got a hit. He's given up a home run, and then Bello. He's got an ERA of five, and he's allowing a 275 average. That's not great. Terrible bullpen. Kansas City, even though their lineup is not as hot as Boston, they should be able to scrape across a few runs. And then we take a look here at his hits. Look at that, 755797. Seven, seven. That's far from elite. And then he's going five to six innings. Had one here. He went seven. And then he gives up a couple earned runs every start. Two, three, 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 five, one, seven. So we could say he's going to give up two to three, and then we have a horrible bullpen coming in behind him with an ERA over six, and both teams can slap the ball around. Plus, look, when they played, so this was the same matchup, Kansas City got to face Bello, and he went 6.1, but he gave up seven hits and three runs. So if Kansas City can hang another three runs, and then if Boston can hang three runs, we're at six right off the bat. 
and then the two terrible bullpens come in and we only need to get another run or two to get over the over yeah i'll take that all day so anyways that's how i break down the games on the sheet but those are two plays that i really like let me go real quick and show you what a bad lineup looks like so the white Sox, we've typically been against them Every time except for today, for some reason, I got a feeling they are going to win today. They're plus 160 or 180. I didn't write it up. I didn't bet it. But someone asked me if I was on Oakland, and I said no. For some reason, I just think the White Sox are going to win. They're going to break the streak. Cannon has not been terrible. Stripling sucks. He is awful. So I think he could get annihilated, and they could get some runs on the board. But if you're playing DFS or even just betting, look at this lineup. Last two weeks, 133, 220, 128, 143, 100, 192. That's a terrible lineup. So you would want a pitcher facing them because it's not very scary. But Stripling, when we come down here and look, um, one, five, six, four, two, five. Uh, he's all over the place. So yeah, Oakland likely will win, but the juice, they've juiced it up so high, it's not even worthwhile for me to go with. But anyways, good luck, guys. I'm going to keep this short and sweet.